the mud, the leeches, the heat and humidity. In the end, it was all worth it, and how. Just a glimpse of them was magic enough. But to actually hold an orangutan, one of the rarest creatures on Earth, well, that defies description. It was all part of a remarkable rescue mission into the Sumatran jungle, where the orangutans and their cousins, the gibbons, are on the brink of disaster. Entire forests there are being slashed and burnt to provide us with a product we can't get enough of, palm oil. But thanks to a team from the Perth Zoo, at last there's hope. They could yet be saved from extinction. It's my first encounter with magnificent Sumatran orangutans. And what a welcome. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? There, maybe you remind him of his mother. Claire Campbell and Leif Cox from Perth Zoo are here on a special mission to save the world's most endangered apes. It is pretty special though. We're in the last of the lowland forests in Indonesia with one of the last orangutans on the planet. That's, it's incredible when you think about it. it it's, it's frightening really, that's what it is. The orangutan's such a charismatic species. If we can't get people to protect the orangutan and as a result protect the habitat, then you know, we may as well just wipe everything out. I mean, we have to focus on little areas like this. Excuse me. <laughs> What's in there? Yes, uh, that's, that's... Check them out. That's too good a television, eh? <laughs> this is a family show. Definitely yeah. male, clear. Yeah. <laughs> we found this last refuge of the orangutan, a remote national park, at the end of a long disused logging road. It's a terrifying ride. With breakdowns and broken bridges, it took us 10 hours to travel just 30 kilometres. So it's going to be a bit of a hard walk. Claire and Leif are key players in a daring experiment, establishing a new population of orangutans to halt their rapid slide into extinction. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? Hey, beautiful girl. <laughs> this forest has been set aside as a sanctuary. Some were pets confiscated from backyard cages. Others were bred in zoos and set free. The plan now is that they breed in the wild. By putting the best selection of orangs that we can out into this habitat that's protected. Our ultimate goal is that they'll reproduce. So. Many babies very quickly. We hope so. <laughs> oh, you're so cute. The word orangutan literally means person of the forest, but their forests are vanishing. It's estimated a thousand of them die each year in a mad scramble to clear land and there are only 7,000 left. Do you ever stop and think we are going to run out of time? That's always in the back of our minds, but I guess we have to be a little bit more positive about it. Otherwise, we just give up. So to us, there has to be a, a sense of hope that that's not going to be the case. Um, and I guess that's why we just keep trying. <laughs> you just done did my back. You are cheeky. Orangutans spend almost every minute of their lives up in the forest canopy. These trees provide a whopping 99% of the food that they need to survive. Trouble is, forests are getting harder and harder to find. And it's not surprising when you take a look at this. This slash and burn is happening at a record rate right across the country even in national parks. They've got the chainsaw out in full force today. This sort of destruction must make your stomach turn, does it? Yeah, I mean, we should be standing in the middle of the, the jungle full of wildlife and instead we're listening to chainsaws. 20 years ago, Indonesia gave a green light to the palm oil industry to plunder its forests. 
The nation had 10% of the world's remaining tropical forests. But these sprawling palm plantations are now chewing them up at a phenomenal rate. One estimate says an area the size of a football field is cleared every two seconds. These are big, big people, big money, yeah? the richest of the richest in this country. Emmy Haffield investigates the palm oil industry for Greenpeace. Why is your government letting it happen? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to answer that question. I think it's driven by the profit and the powerful uh, palm oil industry lobby. Yeah? The man heading that palm oil lobby, Mr. Derham Bangoon, says the burning of forests happens all over the world. Just like when you have fires last year, where? In Spain, in the United States, sometimes near Sydney, when I was in Sydney. <laughs> Palm seeds are pressed for their oil. It's used in a massive variety of foods, toiletries, cosmetics, even biofuels. The world's biggest food companies can't get enough of it. This liquid gold rush has made Indonesia the world's leading exporter. But with money literally growing on trees, the industry is out of control. So there are still a lot of palm oil industry yes. people out there yes. doing the wrong thing. Yes. So what are you going to do to stop them? Well, the government should uh, enforce the law. There's law that they will not cut the trees, they cannot cut, will not cut the forest. If you knew a company was doing the wrong thing, would you report them? Yes. Have you ever reported a palm oil company? No. Not one? Not one. In all the forest that's been chopped down? Yeah, we, we are not supposed to go there and find, look for it. It's not our, our job. Back in the jungle, Claire and Leif are on the hunt for one ape in particular, an orangutan named Tamara. Will she uh, recognise you when she sees you, Leif? Oh yeah, no, orangutans remember you forever. There's a very special connection. Tamara was born at Perth Zoo and they reared her for 15 years. More than a year ago, they opened the gate of a quarantine cage and released her into the Sumatran forest. Good girl. The first time in her life, she was unsure that the keepers were actually letting her out rather than spending their time trying to keep her in. You be careful, girl. Since then, Tamara's been roaming free. Where is she? But thanks to the park rangers, Tamara. we know we're closing in. Hey, pretty girl. Finally, we spot her, 50 metres up, and wondering what all the fuss is about. Tamara, hello. She looks like the Queen of Sheba up there, doesn't she? <laughs> she thinks she is. Orangutans spend almost all their lives alone. But with those familiar faces and the voices from her captive past, Tamara seemed to want a reunion as much as Claire and Leif did. I, I think she's looking really good. She's getting enough food and enough variety of food to keep that sort of condition on her. Good girl. What a good girl. Does she look exactly the same as when you Saw her 15 months ago in the zoo. I think she looks better. Do you? Well, she looks better just because of where she is. I mean, it's where, where she belongs. But she certainly looks healthy. It's great. The signs are good that Tamara's adapting well. Having even one more orangutan in the wild means a lot when numbers are so critical. But they're not the only apes being wiped out by the destruction of Indonesia's forests. This 
is the silvery gibbon. No one knows for sure, but there may be just 400 left. How can you not love gibbons? I just love them. I just want, I want to help them. And they need lots of help. I sometimes think of these guys as the forgotten apes. Um, they don't get anywhere near as much attention as their larger cousins, but their situation is just as bad. So if anything, they need more help. Is it just size? Probably. Yeah, I guess the, the larger mammals always appeal to, to most people. He, is he mooning us there or am I? <laughs> He's mooning you. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Slowly but surely, gibbons are being rescued from the illegal pet trade and brought to this refuge near Jakarta. Oh my god, he's beautiful. He is, isn't he? Oh my 5.6. It's vital to keep every last one alive, so Perth Zoo has sent their vet, Karen Payne, to check the new arrivals. It's in the size of the teeth. He got a heart rate of about 140, but he settled down a bit, so it's probably good to do another one. Mm -hmm. But the really important stuff is going on outside, in cages built in the National Park, encouraging gibbons to breed. Do they make that connection easily? Are they boyfriend, girlfriend, quickly? Mm, no, they're, they're fussy little critters. They're, they're very much like humans. They, they either like each other or they don't. Well, they wouldn't be happy with you if you chose them an ugly one. No, exactly. And look at Jeffrey, he's so gorgeous. <laughs> we had to try and pick a nice one for him. <laughs> what would you give to see a baby? I'd give anything to see a baby here. That's, that's going to be the ultimate. Oh, the ultimate would just be to see a, a pair with a baby back out in the wild. That would be the best. Gibbons are now so rare, it's near impossible to spot them in the wild. In five years of coming here, Claire's never seen one. But she agreed to take me on her latest search. After six hours in the jungle, we heard a distinctive call. And there they were. I can't believe how far they drop from one tree to another. There it goes. You're, you're, you're really stoked to that, aren't you? Yeah. Been waiting a long time for this. But time's running seriously short. Indonesia is desperate to develop today. Never mind what happens to the wildlife tomorrow. But no one loves these animals more than Claire and Leif. And they're in there for the fight. All the hard work is for these guys and, and to actually see some in the wild and know that they're, they're still there, it gives me a reason, a reason to keep going and, and some hope for the future for them. <laughs> 